Hi, I'm Don Carswell, General Manager of Dublin Chevy Buick GMC. During these uncertain times, we want you to know that Dublin Chevy Buick GMC cares. Whether picking your car up for service or delivering your new car to your home, Dublin Chevrolet cares. From Dublin Chevrolet to your driveway. Anywhere in the state of Georgia. And to make it easier for you, we're offering 84 months at 0% with no payment for 120 days. Dublin Chevrolet, the only dealer you will ever need. Welcome to Chamber Talk. We are live at Fairview Park Hospital today and we're doing our show a little different today. Uh, Dr. Andrew Bozeman, I want to say thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for the invitation. Hey, it is a beautiful day here at Fairview Park Hospital. I've, I've looked out of the window in the room where we're interviewing here and there's some folks walking around outside. Uh, the sun is shining and uh, just a beautiful day and I want to say thank you for taking time out to come and uh, share with us a little bit today. Give us an update on what's going on with your practice particularly and, and with pediatrics and uh, all those sorts of things here at Fairview Park Hospital. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to you for just a second and give us a, give us a broad overview and update of everything that you, that you do um, sure. and more importantly, what you need to be doing more of maybe in the coming yeah, days. Right. Uh, well, thanks for having me. Um, so I'm Andy Bozeman, pediatric surgeon here at Fairview Park Hospital. Um, my practice uh, is from birth all the way typically to 18 years of age for uh, pediatric general and thoracic surgery. Um, and I've been here around three years. Um, I stay very busy here in this practice. Obviously, um, the COVID situation has changed life as, as we know it for a, for a lot of different people in a lot of different, you know, in a lot of different ways. Um, but we're, we're staying busy. Um, we, in our practice, we've um, started, you know, to see patients more regularly now after, you know, it looks as though the peak hopefully um, is, is past us. So uh, we're, we're staying engaged and, and seeing patients currently. So are you regular business hours, Dr. Bozeman? And if you are, what are those hours? Yes, sir. We're there from eight to five every day. Um, I'm typically in the operating room one day a week, but we have office staff there. So we're here five days a week and, and certainly we're here for emergencies when they happen because they oftentimes don't happen, you know, from eight to five. All right. And you and I had a, a great conversation um, very recently, as a matter of fact, but we were talking about children and, and um, surgeries and, and some people call them different elective or whatever else, but surgery period um, for pediatrics right now. I know you have um, children yourself. Uh, let's talk about that. Would, would you bring your child to the hospital and, and let them have surgery? It's a great question. Um, you know, this is my hometown. I'm, I'm very, uh, I have a lot of pride in our medical community and in our community in general. Um, two of my children have actually had operations in this hospital. I've always thought it was a safe place to do surgery. Certainly I wouldn't practice in a place that I didn't think was safe. Um, you know, since this, uh, this whole COVID situation has, has come about, I think that um, certainly uh, from a sterility standpoint, it's always been a safe, sterile, very nice place to practice surgery. I think it's even better. Um, and so the ultimate litmus test for me, uh, for what I would recommend to my patients is what, what would I allow my own children, you know, what kind of situation would I put them in as far as from a surgery standpoint? I wouldn't hesitate to let them have surgery here in this hospital. It's always been safe and it continues to be a very safe place to have an operation. I know from the, even today coming in, I mean, you, nothing about being where we are in here today feels unsafe at all to me. Um, and, and I agree, you know, we, we discussed, um, you know, in a conversation again earlier about 9-11 uh, and I did, careful to use that analogy sometimes, but, but two weeks after 9-11, I mean, if you wanted to fly on an airplane, oh, that was it, probably it was probably the safest one, time. Right, and, and certainly with all the, um, the care that was previously taken, I'm, I'm sure even that much more is taken now to make sure that there's a sterile environment here. Um, certainly, you know, a, a lot of our housekeeping, you know, as far as uh, overall cleanling, cleanliness, the hospital has always been a very clean place, but that's been enhanced. If you've noticed when you come through the doors, there's there's checks there. They take your temperature, your mask, your socially distancing, all the things that the CDC recommends. Certainly, we're upholding those. So um, it's impacted us all, but but life goes on, and it continues to be a very safe place to 
to have surgery. So wellness visits and, and things such as that, folks should be right. coming and scheduling it, appointments? Certainly. I mean, in, in the world of, of surgery, pediatric surgery, we have emergencies such as appendicitis, such as acute trauma. Those things are different than what we may say are scheduled cases. So if your child has an inguinal hernia or maybe um, a, an umbilical hernia or a belly button hernia, or there's a myriad of other things that we take care of in the world of ped surgery. Just because it's scheduled, and some people would say elective, that doesn't mean it should be indefinitely put off because there are consequences to that. We continue to believe that now is a time that with good clinical decision making that we can continue with those scheduled cases. Dr. Bozeman, are you uh, doing very much with telemedicine or is that, that something you're starting to see more of? Well, if you'd asked me that question a couple weeks ago, I'd have said no, but yes, we've had a quick ramp up. And I tell you, I think that's something that's here to stay. Um, and it was, it, it's going to have a presence, I will say that. Um, I've adopted it. I, I like using telemedicine. A lot of our patients in pediatric surgery in this region, they come from great distances. We're, we still are in rural America. So a lot of the conditions that I see, at least on an initial consultation, can be seen via telehealth. And we've used that medium multiple times as early as this morning for a couple patient encounters. So I like it. it it's very easy for the parents to use. I mean, they can use their smartphone. Um, and most everyone these days has some, some method or way of, of communicating via, you know, with audio and visual so so can it's you a cool and, thing. and I, I know we're live doing this and we didn't didn't prep a whole lot because we wanted this to come across to people we wanted them to see um, that, that we were not trying to pull anything over on anybody right. or just being open and honest with them um, I don't know myself if I were at home and, and I had small children at home and I needed to see you and I was more comfortable with telemedicine can you walk me through it all? How Absolutely. That would look? Um, so typically the, the child's pediatrician would send over a referral to my office. Uh, the child has a surgical need. And so my office would get in contact with, the, with one of the parents and give them the option, depending on the condition, but let's just say the child had a belly button hernia, okay? A lot of those we monitor up until three, four, five years of age. But we need to, to, to see that at least on an initial consultation to determine you know, what's the size of the hernia? Is it safe to watch? And all that can be transmitted via, you know, telemedicine. So once that referral has come over, my office would reach out to that parent and then schedule the telehealth visit. And they would get a link in their email and they follow that link and I'll be ready on my end at that time and, and it connects and we've got audio and visual. It's a really cool thing. I, like I said, I think it's in, in some ways, it's here to stay, and that, that's a good thing. We're, we're progressing. We're, we're moving on. So it may be like in something else that's become very familiar to me in the last three or four weeks, uh, a Zoom meeting. Right, right Pretty exactly. much someone sends you a link, you yeah. click on that link, and, and here you are. I, I think that, you know, um, that's here to stay as well. Um, and there are certain things that you need to have that physical encounter for. Um, you know, with a child that's got an inguinal hernia, sometimes that's hard to differentiate between other conditions. You know, is that just a lymph node, for instance, in the groin, or is it a true hernia? Sometimes that's difficult to, to determine just based on, you know, looking at an image, a live image. You actually, it has to go back to old school bedside medicine, putting your hands on the patient. And we have to be very particular about the ones that we think are, are you know, are amenable to telehealth. But uh, a child that otherwise would need to come, you know, for an hour and a half, two hour, you know, transportation here, that's really helpful for the parents as well. And, you know, it minimizes contact as well during right. this whole COVID situation. And, and during this period, um, Dr. Bozeman, have you actually seen a patient or, or taking care of someone maybe that had COVID-19 or? No, um, we're, we're blessed in this area, to my knowledge, in the South Central Health District, which is our 10 county area. We have not had a positive pediatric patient for COVID. And um, I do know here at Fairview, there has not been a pediatric patient that has tested positive that has received treatment here. Now, certainly there are pediatric patients across you know, the globe that have been affected, but this has turned out not to be one of those spots, thank goodness. And if someone um, is bringing their child to the hospital, let's say tomorrow, today, next week, what, what do they need to know? What do they need to do? How many people can come? Um, right. Cover some of those things. So there's going to be screenings at the door, all entrance ways to the hospital. Um, for now, for pediatric patients, because we are minimizing the amount of people accompanying that patient, it should really be one parent or caregiver. Okay. And if it's a, a surgery that requires an overnight stay or something? They're same certainly thing? welcome to have that one guest overnight. 
Okay, fantastic. Um, before we wrap up, is there anything else you would like to, to cover or just to, to recommend to our viewers today about having care for their children during this time? No, I think we're better prepared than we ever have been for this. And, you know, as we move forward, I think there are, well, I know there are fewer and fewer COVID cases reported in this area. The hospital has always been a safe place to receive medical care. I think that's only enhanced. So we're making good clinical decisions, you know, that um, that communication is directly between the patient's caregiver, their parent, and myself. And, you know, we're, we're moving forward because we do think it's safe. And um, just happy to be here and thank you for your support for our community. Well, we're, again, we're glad to have you here, uh, your expertise, and, uh, and, and that you came back home to, to practice uh, it's, here. It's been a blessing. So, so. Um, we appreciate you. And, and again, we appreciate you, you guys for joining us today. And, and we want you to know the staff, the team here at Fairview Park Hospital, um, great, great attitudes, pleasant place to be, safe place to be. Um, if you need to see the doctor, come see your doctor. If you have appointments, schedule those appointments and uh, follow the precautions that are put out there so that we can all stay safe and make sure today and every day is a great day for business in Dublin and Lawrence County. Dublin Macon Cardiology, celebrating over 14 years of serving Dublin and Lawrence County. At Dublin Macon Cardiology, we're always committed to taking care of you and your heart. Bringing state-of-the-art cardiac care closer to home with a walk-in chest pain center. New patients are always welcome and no referral is ever required. Dr. Vega is proud to announce the addition of Elise Rotrammel, a nurse practitioner, to our staff. Drop by today at Dublin Macon Cardiology, 206A Hospital Drive in Dublin.